It is one of the supreme ironies of my life that I now make public and disclose to the world what I kept secret for all these years. And some of you know this, my FOC people, because I've mentioned it before. For today, the context is different and the lives of other people are involved. And that is, of course, that I am a gay man. When I discovered this many years ago, in the time between leaving high school and entering college, it was a nightmare. Gayness was a crime. If you were discovered, you were sent to prison. If you were discovered by the wrong people, you were blackmailed for the rest of your life. And those who couldn't stand it any longer jumped from high-rise buildings. So one of the reasons I mention this today is because in spite of the so-called era of tolerance that we are living in now, every day there are thousands of young people, mostly men, gay men, committing suicide because their families don't want them, and their communities don't want them. But I want them. I want them to live. And so I speak for them. Because when this nightmare began my life, there was only one single out person in the world. One. And he was Oscar Wilde. And everybody knew what had happened to him. And I felt I had no future. And so I began every day for almost the next 20 years trying to kill myself. It was very labor intensive, mentally speaking. And then I decided to postpone it. I thought, well, I'll do it when I'm 30. And so years later at college in England, I met a woman who was very distraught. And she felt that if she had a baby, her life would have meaning again. So I am a gallant individual, and I figured, well, I'm going to throw my life away anyway. Let's help her. So I did. And I thought, we'll have the baby, and then I will disappear, and she won't even remember my name. So in due time, we had the baby, Stephen Blackman, the hero of today's lecture. He was very beautiful and very funny. And he became more interesting every single day. And we became each other's best friend. And those who were at the exhibit across the hall two summers ago know that he died six years ago now, he was 55, a very distinguished, happy videographer. He loved his work so much that he kept saying he would do it for free because it was so much fun. And I have a friend who said to me, when my son died, I thought I would never be happy again. And I thought, that was me also. But to my astonishment, and I cannot figure this out, I'm one of the happiest people I know, and happier even than when I was young. So I'm grateful and very lucky for that. So I have a couple of questions for you. 
This lecture has been publicized in various ways. So among the FOC people here, who has not met me before? Thank you for coming. Among the library people here, who has not met me before? Thank you. Uh, I guess that I had some more question, but I can't remember, so you're lucky. <laughs> OK, I won't talk about first day covers, except to say that in my family, long ago as children, we were stamp collectors, and so we knew what these were. It's a, an envelope with a stamp canceled on the first day that it was sold to the public with the name of the city and the date. If you have these, it's a su success. And there are still people who collect them. I can't imagine why, because there are no more stamp shops in San Francisco when I began in the 50s. There were at least four, including the Emporium, which is no longer there. And I believe that every country that issues stamps does this because it makes money for them. They, people buy stamps and they don't use them. So that's a win-win for the government. In this country, they're all canceled at various cities on various dates. And I knew about this because I was working at the time I resumed at Rincon Annex downtown, where there was a poster every month on the new stamp that was coming out. And I had remembered in my own case as a child the joy and the exhilaration of receiving my own personal mail. And I know that some of you roughly about my age can remember this from your own childhood. And I wanted Stephen to experience this. So at first, his covers go across the bay to Berkeley. And then later, when his mother took him back to England to live, they go back to Oxford. And during the course of his childhood there, he would send me first day covers from England and ever since he was tiny, he was Big Steve. So he used to call me Big Al. And he addressed all his covers to me, Big Al, et cetera, et cetera, San Francisco, California. So if you want to know how to get one of these, then look it up on the web, because the procedure has changed several times over the years. And I have been away for it now for a while, and I don't know what they do, but I'm sure that they still issue first day covers. So I will begin with what you see on the screen, which is for every envelope, I would do a layout on tracing paper. I would put that in my envelope, put it on a light box, and then with color and either a pen or a quill, as we become calligraphers and go on and learn more and more, we learn how to cut feathers to become quills that we can write with. And the advantage for me was that it gives a much finer line on the paper than a steel pen does. So the first stamp, I don't remember it. It had something to do with textiles or weaving or something like that. The second one, you will see later as an envelope. And the third one is Humphrey Bogart. And you will see that also as an envelope. And we have a great many slides to go. So there will be a break 15 minutes for you to stand up and stretch and yawn if you haven't been yawning already. <laughs> and please don't leave, because the most interesting ones are in the second half. So now, is this going to work? OK, the top one, which is a mess. I didn't know to leave it out or keep it in. It's for Moby Dick, Herman Melville, in other words. And for some reason, I used a brush and uh, acrylic 
because I thought it would give a more or, watery look. The red one around the circle is for friendship with Morocco, and look how friendly we are with Morocco today. The triangle, I'll talk about that later, you will see it, and the bottom one was again the acrylic, it was, and you will see that as a Christmas stamp. It's one of the most beautiful of them. For foreign stamps, I would always write with my best handwriting to the postal administration of whatever country that was. So the top one was the Bank of California. You can see what their check looked like. This, is this? No, this is the back of them. The back of my checks when they came back to me were often more interesting than the front. <laughs> Look how many postal administrations they went through, how many signatures, even a stamp from New Zealand. Now your checks don't come back to you at all. So look what you miss, okay? Okay, there are two envelopes that I bought because I was there at the time. There was a postal expo in London in 1970, and I saw this envelope, which I thought was gorgeous, as we say. So I wrote my name on the bottom. I had a new, brand new Parker Broadpoint fountain pen in my pocket. That's what I used. And then I handed it in and paid whatever it was. They sent it to Ed Edinburgh, put the stamps on, canceled it, and sent it back to me in San Francisco. There were two at that event. This is one. And I think this is one of their most beautiful stamps of all time. Historic issues, as you can see. The cancellation is important for them. It is the first one that was ever used. They call this the Maltese Cross. And that was my handwriting in 1970. And this is the first American one, the same handwriting. That stamp is called Flag Over the White House. It was six cents. I don't know what it is today. Okay, I was very lucky in choosing my envelopes. Just by chance, the first envelopes I bought were a box of 100, you can see at Neiman Marcus, I always chose one of San Francisco's exclusive department stores because I like the way they emboss the envelope. That means almost as much to me as my writing on the front, because I'm a snob. <laughs> and you can see all those marks are all the postal canceling machines that this went through in order to come back to me. This is again an early one. And there are some people who collect only these. The stamp is for one cent and a quarter of a cent. And he was Albert Gallatin. I think he was Swiss. He was, came to this country. I think he was the first secretary of the treasury or something like that. So this is canceled in Los Angeles. And this cover went to Boston, where they cancel it on the back, as you can see in that mini. It says Airport Mail Facility, Boston. Uh, that's the only first flight cover that I'm aware of. Some of you will remember this progression of A, B, C, D, E, F, G stamps. And at that time, when I was living on Schrader Street, I had a D in my address. I cannot do that now. And this is probably, this is 1985. I began in 68. It took me that long to realize that stamps were individual, that I did not need a italic handwriting address under there. The image on the stamp finally reached my brain that this was individual. And so that is this one, 1985. Okay, this kind of breaks my heart because this was the first love stamp. And I did not know about that until this, that morning 
in order to get this into the mail. So I forget the name of that designer. Who is it? Because when you go to Philadelphia, there's a huge square block of metal in this shape with this color. It is, thank you, Robert Indiana. That would have been totally different had I, not, had, I had time. This was the second love stamp, which I did not admire in the least, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this one, along the way, I stole this lettering style from one of our FOC members, a fellow named Peter Bailey, you may recognize him from being Red Dog Pie Face in On the Road by Jack Kerouac. He lived here in the Zen Center, and he had on his wall a piece of lettering that he designed that when you looked at it, it looked like grass, the whole thing. It was mind-boggling. And when you looked long enough, you could read it. It was a poem. It said, where is the wind to lull the grass that deer may pause to drink? And so, Peter, this is in your honor, Red Dog. OK, some of you may re recognize this. This is Sister Mary Corita, AKA Corita Kent. She was a nun, I forget her order, at Immaculate Heart College in Los Angeles. She was the teacher of David Meckelberg, who was my first calligraphy teacher. And she was famous at the time for these wild silkscreen pieces that she designed, you know, Life Magazine, and then Mahatma Gandhi down there, and then Wonder Bread, and then uh, Franklin Roosevelt, et cetera, et cetera. They were wildly sold throughout California and probably the country and maybe the world. Now they are collector's items. So she designed this. And I had several co covers that I did for myself. And I did one for her because she was coming to Oakland to an exhibit. And I thought I would go this and have her autograph it with my other ones because the collectors are thrilled when they can get the signature of the designer of the stamp on their envelope. But she didn't come. She was beginning to be very ill in Boston as an art director, Corita Kent, and she died. So she never saw this. So this, I guess, is now dedicated to her. This was another, I don't know how many of you are remembering these stamps, but they all appeared during your lifetimes as well as mine. And I don't know where I had the patience to do this because I don't think I could do it now. There's another similar one later on. Okay, here's the design that you saw. I could see Lynn's Stamp News was a publication from Sydney, Ohio that came out every week, and I could see what was coming out. And so I saw this cancellation, and of course I wanted it, and so I designed this. The next year they repeated it again, but I, I did not get that. This is the first of the Pride cancellations. Organizations had been battling the US government to please have a pride cancellation. And finally, they got this one. I went to the US Stamp Company on Bush Street downtown to get the Walt Whitman stamp. They're not there anymore. And the people who decide this, there is a stamp advisory something council. When I looked at it, it there were 25 people and one is always famous, usually like a football player or a sportsman. And to be a member of the Stamp Citizens Advisory Board, there are three qualifications. You have to hate published postage stamps. You have to have failed art history. <laughs> 
and you have to be blind. <laughs> that way they will take you to be one of their own. <laughs> and so you will be partly re responsible for the next batch of, of US stamps. OK, I'm very fond of the gold nugget days from Paradise, California. And I went to the stamp shop to get the California stamp from 1930. And I used fake gold ink for the lettering. I learned early on that real gold was not satisfactory. We have something called shell gold, but it was not appropriate. For those of you who adored the Jeremiah O'Brien, and I know that at least one of you sails out every year with it into the bay, I saw the cancellation. I bought the historic stamps, and I used a current US stamp on the right to receive this. This is Death Ride Station from Mockleyville, California. And who could not send away for this? Okay. <laughs> and this is one of my favorite, Outer Joint at the Joint Station, Santa Fe, New Mexico. OK, again, quite irresistible. And this one, Piggy Express from Oklahoma. I made it red intentionally, or yes, pink, I think. I'm not sure, red. But I used matching stamps. And this is one of my favorite. The po Pony Express, which has a fascinating history. If you look it up on the web, you will be amazed how short it lived, very short span of time. But my postage stamp, again from downtown, equals the cancellation. And this is another favorite, Whiskey Flat Days, again from California, with the guy in the bathtub, which is what I had my initial A doing. OK, this is a whole series which I think is probably the best one that the US Postal Service, I think it's called the Transportation Series. And because it's a coil stamp, what we collectors do is we show you that it was a strip. If we had one single stamp on that, you would not have known the format. So there are several here. And there are so many slides here, I was going to cull these, but I can't see what's coming, so I don't know. So here you will see them. This was the bicycle. And at this time, as a design feature, I have the strip going across the top, and I had lettering going across the bottom in order to produce a, a harmony there. And this is the canoe, so again, this is zeroing in on the subject of the stamp. And this is the milk wagon. So this is my favorite letter A of all I have, <laughs> that I have ever designed, OK? I'm proud of this. This is another format. These, and this is equally fascinating. I don't know what they called it, probably famous Americans. So th I don't remember if this is the first or not. But this was Audubon. So there's a block of four up there, and then there's a block down there. And to signal him out, the initial becomes a bird. This was some unidentified general who you would never know his name. And this, you know. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. And I know you love this ballad just like I do also too, as God is marching on Julia Ward Howell. 
How, Julia? I love that song. And if I had to do this today, I would make this his flaming, terrible swift sword. I hadn't thought of that in 1987. This is supposed to be John Harvard up there, and they didn't know what he looked like because there were no surviving portraits. But apparently there's a statue of him on the campus, and that's what they used for the image. This is Sitting Bull. OK, there are two envelopes in this collection where the address is derived from one of my teachers as a calligrapher. <clears throat> this was not a teacher, but I had this man's alphabet in my collection. He was Kennedy Smith of Brit. And I was very pleased with, the, with my configuration. I think his flat, unchal writing is the most beautiful I have ever seen, much more attractive than the slanted version. And I thought, well, I should, after all this time of using his alphabet, I should let him know and send him thanks. So I wrote to the SSI in Britain. And I said, can you please send me Kennedy Smith's address? And months later, I received a note from them. We're terribly sorry, but he has died several years ago. So if you're up there, thank you. And this, of course, some of you will recognize this handwriting. It's derived from Friedrich Neugebauer in Austria, who was one of the gifted lettering artists of all time. He came here to teach several times including a 10-day workshop in Ben Lomond down the coast. And when he first came to our knowledge, he invited American calligraphers to come to learn from him in Austria, near Salzburg, where he lived. And I could not go, but Virginia LaRue, who was at one time secretary when I was president of the FOC, she went. And that Christmas, she sent me a Christmas card with this handwriting on it. So I copied her writing for this envelope. It had nothing to do with Robert Kennedy, but I was learning his lettering style. OK, this is, again, I don't know why this is here, but here it is a fire engine from the 1900s, and this guy is putting out my name, OK? <laughs> this, to me, is the worst photo of the cable car that they could have found. I don't know where they got this. <laughs> they got this from the reject pile, I think. It's absurd. This is 1988. OK, I was very pleased with this. This is 1982. I love that stamp. If I had to do this again, I would not use this format, which reminds me of my exhibit across the hall two years ago, which was masterminded by possibly three people in this world, in this room. One of them was Andrea Grimes. Another was Anne Carroll, who is the most charming and skillful person that the library staff ever employed. And the other, if she is looking down, Susie Taylor, I hope you're here. OK, this is quite significant, 1983. When I looked at this one and Stevens next to it, his, because he was in England, needed more postage than mine. So on his envelope, there is a block of four. And the page is so much more attractive than this, than ever after that I used four stamps on my own envelope, even though it cost me more money, but that was not the point. And since I was Brooklyn born, shh, this has even more meaning for me. This is quite pleasing. 
They were trying to get children involved in becoming future stamp collectors. And this was the pretext for that. This you saw in the layout. As soon as I saw the stamp, I knew what I would do. I didn't care what the subject was. OK, this is 1986. I've got that far. For Duke Ellington, I had forgotten what a piano looked like, so I went back to look at one. And these keys are actually accurate. You can play this if you wish. <laughs> and get St. Louis blues or something like that. And this is Louis Armstrong leading his people through the streets of Memphis, Tennessee, or wherever. And because this also was a band situation, there are more. I don't remember exactly when these little people began appearing in my lettering, but there they are. OK, this is the fellow who designed the Statue of Liberty, Bartholdi. This belongs, actually, with another one you will see soon of St. Junipero Serra. I did the two at the same time, using almost the same layout. And this, in Shelburne, Vermont, there is a museum of duck decoys. <laughs> this is friendship with Morocco. And I was quite pleased to be able to Islamophile the address. How friendly are we? OK, this is probably the ugliest stamp that the post office has ever designed. I don't know if it helped hunger in any way. And I almost never used the brush in designing these envelopes. I didn't have the confidence, even though it was my, quote, signature lettering tool. I began with the lettering brush. But I thought this was more or less harmonious with the block of stamps up there. Here's Herman Melville again. And this is the other butterfly. Or at least this is the first. Have we had this? I don't remember. This was ostensibly for the International Year of the Child, 1985. This is, again, the little people. And Knut Rockne was a world-famous athlete as was Lou Gehrig from Cooperstown, New York, and Hemingway from Key West, Florida, now partially walked off the map from the last hurricane. And probably nobody, even golfers, probably don't know this man's name, Francis Wimit. Wimay? And here is Bogart from Los Angeles, California. And this is Republic of Statehood from Washington on the Brazos. So this is a Yankee shooting at a peon sitting there, poor man, duking it out. This was the Bill of Rights from Philadelphia. And this lettering was designed by Julian Waters. And they had altered it somewhat by making the lines heavier than what he originally wrote. And the world of calligraphy was up in arms at the US Postal Service for doing that without notifying him in advance or asking permission. This was 1989. I forget if I was still a postal employee at that time, but I left with one of their hats, OK? <laughs> <laughs> OK, this was Montana Statehood from Helena, Montana, 
or Helena, I don't know how they pronounce it. Okay, Arturo Toscanini was one of the most famous people of my childhood. He was revered as a god by his orchestra and the public. And this is Leonard Bernstein, and many people feel that way about him. So the first one influenced the second, of course. This is 1993. And if I had this one to do over, I would make the initial A at least twice that size. I didn't think of that at that time. OK, this is Cabrillo from San Diego. And I was very happy to be able to get all of these letters into a format that looked like this. And I think this is still the US posted most popular stamp of all time. It was when it was being sold, and I think it still is. And I didn't know until I taught a class in Memphis, Tennessee, and my hostess drove me to Graceland. And this cancellation is the metal gates at the entrance to Graceland. And you can see him playing the guitar there, if you look closely. This was 1993. And this one is the only envelope that is not canceled. Because the stamp news had a little notice that the first day cover club of, I guess, Tennessee, had prepared a cancellation with Elvis Presley's name in the shape of a guitar. And wow, I wanted to see that. So I designed these two envelopes for us and sent this off. And it came back with a note, we are terribly sorry, but the Elvis Presley Foundation did not authorize this, and so we are not doing it. So they broke about 15 million stamp collectors' hearts across the country and returned all of our envelopes. I saw this in the newspaper, so I knew what it looked like the National Postal Museum in Washington, D.C., but I didn't know it would be blue. So luck, I have found over the course of time that if I used blue, it was probably safe, no matter what the stamp looked like. But I was really lucky where this little guy is eating a popsicle, a good humor, actually, chocolate covered. As soon as I saw this stamp, I knew what I would do. And I, this is one of my favorite ones. Although, of course, the father does not have favorites amongst his children, you know that. <laughs> this was the, quote, Asian New Year. They've done them all now, probably several rotations. I'm not quite sure. I tried. Many, a lot did not work. This is the best one. I don't think there may be another one in this series. OK, this is from a large sheet. And this is my son and my own favorite airplane, the GB, even though we've never seen one in real. I think they're from the 30s. I would love to see one of these fly, maybe someday. And this is Dayton, Ohio, where I think there is a race. OK, this is Georgia O'Keeffe, of course. And it's canceled in Santa Fe, which is part of her territory. This is for prisoner of war and missing in action people. And if you go out to the Veterans Administration building on Clement and 42nd Avenue, Thank <sighs> you. 
you will see that they fly the flag for the missing in action people. And once every while they find the remains of one and dig it up and send it home or a prisoner of war. This is so obvious, I don't have to tell you what it is, but it reminds me of many years ago, Neiman Marcus, with his birth in Texas, either Dallas or Houston, I forget. For their Christmas calendar, they had a fruitcake designed in the shape of Texas, <laughs> which was the most beautiful I had ever seen. So I sent for one, no matter the astronomic price I had to pay. And I hoped that they would do it every year, but they only did it that once. It looked exactly like this, OK? This is my last one of the American series. And you will remember the hearts in San Francisco. At every street corner, there was one decorated by a local artist. So this was the best I could do. I used what's called frisket or rub out or something. It's like rubber cement. You write with it, you color over it, and then you erase, and then you see your white lettering. It's very crude, but there it is. OK, this is self-explanatory from the San Diego Zoo, canceled in San Diego. This is the one that we saw before for Barth Barthaldi. This is now Saint Junipero Serra. Many people love him, and many people hate him, and you know the reasons for that. OK, this, to my knowledge, was the first of the Walt Disney stamps of now there have been a billion. But this is not from the US. This is from the tiny republic of San Marino in Italy. And I show this because this is what happens when it's registered, and it comes to your doorstep, and you're not home. And so your postal man writes on the bottom, note left, no response, <laughs> 11571, OK? And this is another. This comes back from Iceland. You're not home. It says, final notice, no response, 33070, with his initials. OK. You learn to live with that. This is what happens when it's a one cent stamp. And the postage is 24 cents or something like that. What, what are you going to do? Okay. Again, it's from the transportation series. I'll go very quickly through these. These were, uh, there was a, a sheet of 35. At that time, there were 35 presidents. So this. I tried to modernize my handwriting to fit Franklin Roosevelt, sort of an art deco thing. This is my most formal italic handwriting. And this is sort of rustic capitals. And this is a lettering style I'm very fond of called civilité, which I hope to master someday. And it's canceled in Quincy, Massachusetts. A lot of these birthplaces are no longer there because the, the towns have changed. They don't exist anymore. So they chose the closest one that they could find. And this is Kennedy, and I tried to be modern for that, Brookline, Massachusetts. And Chester Arthur, this is Unchel looking. And some of you remember, if you were adherents of Herb Cain's column, that the son of Chester Arthur, Gavin Arthur, was a man about town in San Francisco, in the news all the time for some escapade or event he had attended or dinner he sponsored, blah, blah, blah. He was very vocal, parading his father's memory. This was because there were 35 presidents and there were 36 blanks in the 
so in the sheet of stamps, they had an extra space and they filled it with the White House, which I thought was beautiful and intelligent. And I, I'm very fond of how this turned out. This is a sort of a sign painter's format with a large letter at the beginning and a large letter derived from the lettering in the text at the end. So I thought this turned out quite well. OK, this one belongs to the next one. The layout is the same. But this is the popular stamp for Christmas. And this was designed by a child in Jamaica, New York, where he lived. And so that's where the first day ceremony was. They were hoping again to get children to become future stamp collectors. So this layout, which looks like this in red and blue, is exactly the same as this, which is formal in gold ink. So this is when Christmas stamps really used to look like stamps, 1984. Today, they look like something you should throw immediately in the trash. <laughs> OK, I was quite pleased with this. This is canceled in Santa Claus, Indiana. They tried always to have a relationship there. I don't know if they still do. And this I stole from Susie Taylor because she had designed a greeting card for John Prestiani in this format, but using the entire text, I just used the name and address. And because this art by Raphael is in the National Gallery, this is canceled Washington, DC. And this is what you saw before. Again, I don't know why I used acrylic for this. It just seemed like the stamp was so predominant, it needed something more substantial down there. And this is Nazareth, Michigan, as you can see. This again is formal in Detroit, where this thing is in the Detroit Museum of Fine Arts, no doubt. And again, I don't recognize who that is, but this is the formal one. OK, this was a co-issue between Moscow in Russia and Baltimore, American, Maryland. I haven't been there, but there's one of America's most extravagant aquariums. Maybe some of you have seen it. And this is here because I saw riding the bus one morning a fellow wearing one of these hats, OK? You know, this huge thing that they wear to football games. And I was so fascinated by it that I have incorporated into my text. OK. At home, I have boxes of rejects by the hundreds of failures, things that did not work, that I never show to anyone. So I will show you about four. And then you will promise never to tell anyone that you've seen them. <laughs> so this has nothing to do with anything, certainly not Crazy Horse. But I wanted some sort of a something that was different from my usual italic, OK? I went through several crises, of which this is just one. So this is one. And this is another the same, because I had the layout. Uh, words fail me, as you can see. <laughs> I didn't have the word street is not even in there. <laughs> Good Lord. OK, I have to have a terrible apology now. Because for the Black History series, all of the stamps from beginning to end, and there have been zillions of them, are hideous. 
They have really been putting black people down by issuing ugly stamps. And I was perplexed by the theory of blackness. In my text, I thought, well, how can I equal that? It dawned on me <laughs> about two days ago that why didn't you figure out who she was? Was she a writer? You could have had writing. Was she a nurse? Was she a scientist? I could have used the subject matter. Never dawned on me. It was always blackness. They were always terrible. Again, since I am, quote, a victim, I will say patient of the Veterans Administration out here on 42nd Avenue and Clement, where you see that logo as you approach. I could have done wonders with this. I don't know why I didn't think of it. Was I hating them that time? I don't think so. I've given that up. 19. Anyway, OK, this is before I met Ward Dunham. <laughs> so please. Don't tell anybody you've ever seen this, OK? OK, we've reached Australia. I don't know how the time goes. I think we can finish. So stand up and stretch and relax for five minutes. I will set my never fail iPhone. Ha ha. OK, this, I think, is beginning Australia. And this is not really a stamp, technically. This is a seal. There were several, probably four or five or more. This was the next one. It's a platypus. And at this time, 1986, their cancellation was not very adventurous. This was, to my knowledge, the first skateboard on a postage stamp. These are Australia for a while. And there's also a hang glider, and you see that in the cancellation. So they have advanced that. OK, this is one of my favorite series of all times. There are four of them. This was New Zealand's first round stamp. So I had the layout. This is actually the second one, 1997. This was the first, 1988. I thought this was so beautiful. The stamp with the kiwi and the detailed engraving and the circularness. There was once an, inst an instructor on the Berkeley campus who taught a class, design within the circle. He would love this. This is one of the next. And so I matched the color. And this is probably the last, I don't recall. So I, these are quite, I'm about to say breathtaking, but that's praising my own work. We're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to be shy and say, oh, it's just <laughs> terrible. <laughs> OK, this was, this was New Zealand commemora commemorating postage by pigeon. I don't remember how long it lasted, but I have got pigeon gram up there where it says airmail. I didn't do that very often. This is sort of explanatory for New Zealand. And this is one of my favorite envelopes of all time. This is roughly five by eight. It's a medium size between small and gigantic. And this was from British Antarctic Territory. And it came back to me with a letter saying, the envelope that you sent was too small. So we have put these on a larger one and written your name in, in pencil down there so that you can erase it 
and write your own text. <laughs> so I would not change this for the world. You can see how human those people are down there. And sometimes some of these would take a year to come back to me. Uh, I love this because the stamp is so beautiful. And this is Montserrat, which now has been wiped off the face of the earth by Hurricane Irma. And I think Britain is wondering what on earth are they going to do with it now, this white elephant that we have in the Caribbean. What are those people going to do? This is Canada. And this is important, David Lemon, because Adobe had asked me, they knew what my calligraphy looked like because of one or two friends of calligraphy working for Adobe. They said, can we see your work because we want a quirky alphabet. So this is what they chose for my typeface Galahad, which is not quirky in the least, OK? <laughs> they chose something formal close to this. OK, this was a series of four Canadian railways. And look at the cancellation. It's some sort of a hook thing. And I have two. I did not get the last ones, but this is another one. I don't know if I have this patience today. I don't think so. But that's negative. I will retract that statement. <laughs> and as, as soon as I saw this, I knew what my design would be. And I taught my first Canadian workshop was in Calgary. And they put us up at a hotel. And as soon as I turned on the television set, there was the logo of the Canadian Broadcasting Service, which I recognized from my first day cover. And if you look at the upper left, you will see five little colored dots, which is the registration for the five different colors that they used. This appeared on the four end corners of the complete sheet that they published. When I realized this, I asked for it every time, because it makes a much more complete picture. This is a fellow who, during his lifetime, was a rebel fighting against the government one of the METIS Métis, who now they honor as a brave indigenous person or something like that. At the time, they were fighting him. This is an example for calligraphers, where if you change the color every time, you don't have to separate the lines. And I wanted my lettering fighting each other to the death if they could. So they all interact there. And the cancellation is not bad. OK, this was the international year of either the child or youth. You can see the United Nations logo in the center. And if you look at the registration dots going down, there's one, two, three, four, yellow, five. There's another one which is raised, it is embossed. And when I discovered that, I looked at the stamp and I said, well, something must be embossed. And when I looked carefully, the head of the pigeon and the tail are both raised from the flat surface. If I had not seen that in the registry there, I would not have known. This is the attention that they pay to their stamps. This is, again, something about the International Year of Young something or other. Again, you see the United Nations logo with the four faces in it. And this is a neon arrow going through a heart over somebody's blue jeans. 
And this is a stamp celebrating La Presse, P-R-E-S-S-E. And the whole text is made up of that word, repeated, but graded so that you can see the face of the owner of the press, whatever his, well, there his name, Berton. Again, it has a Z, I cannot do this where I live now. This was a Canadian woman who fought on the Iroquois, she was, fought on the side of the British during the American Revolutionary War. And she is wearing the Union Jack on her chest, and so I have there below the name. And again, I used some sort of a frisket, rubber cement-like solution to do the lettering. Then I did the color, then I erased carefully, and then you see the white lettering underneath. It's, it can be rewarding, it can be hair-raising, that technique, depending on how careful you are. This is for the Olympics in 12, no, 88, I don't know. Anyway, they're skiing in the design, and so my people are skiing and ice skating. That's a, a companion to it. And I still haven't really looked at what on earth this is, but when I saw this image on the stamp, I thought I will give that a try. And I thought I was successful. And it is Sommet de Quebec, Quebec Summit. Okay, there we are, 1987. You can see that. This is Canadian technology, and I thought this was one of my best covers ever. I'm really pleased with this. And this is the first <coughs> Braille stamp that I know. There have been more, but I have not seen them. And this is from a city in Denmark, Fredericia which is very easygoing for handicapped people. Like the street furniture is manageable for visually impaired, et cetera, et cetera. So many years ago, moonlighting from a job at UC Medical Center, I would leave one day every week extra. I had a car at that time. I drove out to the beach to the Bay Area Braille Society. I thought if I could learn Braille, it would help my calligraphy maybe because I was in distress at that time. And so for these envelopes, I sort of took them apart, reversed them, and I punched the lettering in to be my name, and Stevens. And I realized years later that I made a mistake because for a capital letter, which my A is, I should have had another dot in front. So here I am in lowercase braille letters. Okay, this is nine by 12, it's quite huge. And I cannot do flourishes like some of my brilliant colleagues do. I'm green up here with envy. They just dash it off as they're writing. I have to have a layout exactly penciled in and then I will meticulously go over it with my pointed pen nib. So I wanted this because these are famous graphic designers of Finland. And probably Finns don't even know who they are, but I did because they were mentioned in the newspaper, in the stamp news. This is for Andrea Grimes, because she is infatuated with the movement. 
as I am. How many of you are infatuated by moments? One, two, look how many hands. OK. Well, this is a card. It's not an envelope. I had to design the label, which you see, with a moment on it, send it to them with the money, and then they put it on this card and send it back to me. OK, this was a stroke of luck. Because this stamp, and France issues one of these huge stamps, I think every year. This is the only one I have. They are breathtaking. I saw the stamp in Lynn's Stamp News, but it was in black and white. And I thought, I want that. So I designed the configuration. And I usually have good luck designing red, blue, and green. Usually, whatever it is will turn out to be presentable. So I started with that. And then by a whim, I don't know why I choose yellow, but I did. And it turned out to be exactly what's on the stamp, which was one of my great strokes of good luck. And you see the cancellation. It's a window in the Cathedral of Strasbourg. And this is also from the Council of Europe in Strasbourg. For these, I had to send a bank draft. A check would not suffice. And when we looked carefully with a microscope, a magnifying glass, what's coming out of there is a child's shoe. So there comes my A. I'm very happy with this address. I think these three stamps, red, blue, and green, really beautiful. There are several of these. This is issued every year by the French Antarctic Territory. And this took a year to come back, because I think they only had a ship that goes down there once a year. <laughs> and this envelope, which is something like five by eight inches, I designed this for the commemorative stamp of Princess Grace of Monaco. And somehow it was returned to me blank with the stamp and a souvenir sheet and something else. I forget why my envelope was not sufficient for them. But I had to act in a hurry. I sent it off to the South Pacific, and it worked. And these are sort of the stamps of what they look like in our childhood. I will say our, because some of you are almost in the same age bracket. This was next year, again, where they are real stamps designed, engraved with meticulous care. And I kept the same format. And this was questionable for a long time. Shall I leave it in or take it out? We looked at it the other day. And the stamps are from Holland, Nederland. And even though the lettering is geometric, it has nothing to do with the stamps. And I thought, why didn't I make a great big blue A in the front or fill in these circles with color? This is what you learn in later, whatever that's called. This is Germany, 50 years of the stamp, of the postage stamp. And I stole this format from the cover of the first day cover society, where they had little envelopes going down. And this worked perfectly. OK, there are two of these. This is Stephen's namesake, Richard Wagner. This was, I saw the image in black and white in Lindstamp News. I didn't know what to do, but I thought, well, blue usually works. And then I thought, well, he's royal, so I will use purple. And it looks like it's intentional. And I have up there AML and then Schwanpost and then Paar Avian. 
So this is mine. And my letter A is a swan. And so is Stevens, because he never did get to see this. I'm terribly sorry. I didn't get a chance to send it to him, but I wanted to keep the two together. And here we are again, and this is Austria, for the International Richard Wagner Congress in Vienna, 1986. So here is my swan, again the same, and here is Stevens. And they put these confounded stickers on there, which I hate, but by that time, nothing I can do. This is about, is it eight inches long? I forget, it's a wide envelope. It is for the, it's from Guernsey in the Channel Islands. And two things, it's stamps on stamps, which some collectors collect only. The image of previously issued stamps on current ones used for postage. And I forget what the anniversary was here. I think it was the anniversary of the Penny Black, the first one on the left. But again, the so-called Maltese Cross historic postman, postmark. OK, this was Olympics. Uh, there was this sheet of stamps. There was also a souvenir sheet. And I thought that what I did for this was quite good. At the risk <laughs> of sounding uh, a bit risque, <laughs> if I had to do this over, I would have a little dick <laughs> on that first guy. But I either didn't think of it or I didn't have the nerve. <laughs> I forget which. But I, I do love this series. Uh, and in the cancellation, it's, it's hard to see, but there's the, the wreath of the victor. OK, here's the other one, which is brush written, although I don't do it much. And this designer was a famous British artist named Sir Hugh Kassan, noted for his watercolors. And in some of them, he has a very fine line around the subject matter. And so I took my pointed pen and I made a very fine line under some of the, well, most of the letters in the, in the name. This is one of the most exciting stamps of all time of any country. This is in honor of the designer Thomas de la Rue, R-U-E. He designed the playing card on the left. He designed the fountain pen next to it. He designed the whatever is going on. It's a printing press, right? He designed the first British postage stamp. And he designed the money. There's a pound note there on the end. And so I have got some of that into my name down there. Uh, I think if the US postage, postage department saw this, they would have a stroke. OK, this is hummingbirds from Guernsey. Thank you. And you can't see it well, but there's a, a, a hummingbird. In it. There's a, a, a butterfly. Excuse me. This is butterflies. There's a butterfly in the cancellation. And this is a companion to that other Isle of Man you saw. Again, it's a long envelope with the Maltese cross. This is one of my favorite envelopes, because I thought it's, there's such a harmony there between address 
and stamp its Swedish board games, I guess. The cancellation with the dice was shown in the Linz Stamp News, so I knew what I was sending for. So I designed this and sent it off to them, and it came back with the stamps with an ordinary postmark that said Sweden. So I wrote them a letter, and I said, this is what you advertise in the newspaper. Why do you send me this? Oh, we are terribly sorry. If you send us another envelope, we will send you the correct cancellation. So I did it over, and I sent it, and they did. So it was, for this, it was worth doing. This was another combined first day with Sweden and the United States. And this is the Swedish stamp. And in the third one, you'll see it later, they are magnifying the American three cent stamp. I forget the year, but it commemorated the landing of the Swedes and Finns. This is Britain. I forgot to mention these envelopes are about seven inches by four. You should have known that in the beginning. This is the pound, 10 pounds, which is rather expensive. And there is Britannia with her trident. And I am one of the very few people fond of the Queen Mother. This is celebrating her 80th birthday. And all of the almost hundreds of thousands of islands and territories that Britain owned, they all brought out stamps in her honor. And I have a four or five. In my lifetime, during World War II, while some of you remember that, she and her husband, George the Sixth, they stayed in Britain during the bombing when other royalties in other countries fled. They had tremendous, <clears throat> tremendous courage, and I respect her for that. Here she is in the cycle of her life, a girl, a woman, a queen, a queen mother canceled in Edinburgh, as Britain does. I thought this, I like to look at this cover. I'm proud of her. She, she became a figure of fun as she got older and was ridiculed hugely in the British press. <clears throat> this is a format that Britain brings out frequently of the useful stamps and in the middle, the reason for them. So this is <clears throat> for, <clears throat> excuse me, Agatha Christie, Queen of Crime. And you can see there's the keyhole that the bad man is peeping through. This was British textiles. And I love these stamps. They are so beautiful, I think. And so the Cancellation is a sort of a textile thing, weaving. The first one is by William Morris. You can recognize that. And the others, I'm not quite sure. The third one is Paul Nash, a well-known British designer. Uh, they're really lovely. I'm sorry that I didn't know at that time to be more adventurous. OK, these are long. I think they're 12 inches by four, something like that. And these are the British Christmas stamps. And they alternate. Every year, there's a popular one, and then 
a religious one, and then popular, and then religious, etc. And we do that also, but nothing like this, right? <laughs> this was the first one that I saw. And there is a dove in every stamp. The first one it is in the shrubbery. The next one, it is on that lamppost. Then it's under that umbrella. There are two. Then amongst those Victorian chimney pots. And then they're flying the mail into the post box. This is a triumph of design in my estimation. This was, I guess, the carnival, the next a popular year with Aladdin's lamp. And then there's more popular with them bringing the Christmas tree home, etc. And then British cathedrals, this would be the religious one. OK, now we have a series of ordinary British stamps. This was fireworks. They actually built these things and then set them off and then photographed them. And then here they are on stamps. This was British photography. They chose this fellow who specialized in flowers. And as soon as I saw these, I knew what I would do. And there is a bumblebee. You can see that in the cancellation. This is British toys. And again, most of these are canceled in Edinburgh. And this is a favorite. The anniversary of the Greenwich Meridian. You can see where it is in the cancellation. Three feet, blah, 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 57 degrees west. In the first one, the meridian is going through the telescope. In the second one, it's going through the building. In the third one, it's going through the city on the map of Britain. And in the last one, it is circling the globe. And I thought that my design was OK, but if I could do that now, I would have the red line going from the bottom out of the page up out of the page. I didn't have that awareness when this came out. But I think this, the stamps are a triumph of design. Some of you will remember this. It's Halley's Comet. As the comet used to be depicted on historic manuscripts, there it is in the cancellation. And these were, <clears throat> were designed by Ralph, Ralph, <clears throat> Ralph Stedman one of the quirkiest designers in the profession. <clears throat> and if some of you can remember his book, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, you will remember what his work looks like. <clears throat> These originals were three feet long, and they were reduced to postage stamp size. Here's another one that as soon as I saw it, I knew what I would do. It is commemorating Isaac Newton. And there is the apple falling in the cancellation. And the first design by a young woman, I don't remember her name. She, sub she submitted that. And they accepted her. And uh, she designed the whole series. In each one, there is also the title of one of his scientific works. Brilliant hardly describes how I feel about that. This is another. This is a famous maritime clock by John Harrison. The first one is the face of the clock. The second one, when you remove the face, this is what's underneath. The next one is what's underneath that. And the bottom one is the base. And I don't think that I would. Would I think of this today? I don't know. This is one of my favorites. 
This is Kew Gardens in England in 1990. And so these were stadless watercolor pencils where I would just maneuver the tip of the pencil until I made it ink-like, and then I would feed it through my pen nib and fill in the shapes down below. And they have these exotic colors like the pink and the lavender, which is in the stamps. Did I know that? I, yes, I did know that because I saw it. The stamp bulletin that Britain sends out is in color. At least it was at that time. I don't, I don't know now, but I would think so because I still get the bulletin from Australia every f four months. I get the one from Belgium and Luxembourg and Can not Canada anymore, but almost. So I do know what's coming out, and I see it. I think this is one of the most exciting issues of all time. This is King Arthur. And you can see the Holy Grail in the cancellation. What a remarkable way to depict that. So you can read on each one on the left what they are. Galahad, my typeface. Guinevere and Lancelot, that's poor, whatever her name is. from the movie, <laughs> who got involved with the, that Italian guy. Oh, Vanessa Redgrave, there we go. <laughs> OK, the Lady of the Lake is the next one. And then there is Lancelot, uh, Arthur himself, and Merlin. Beautiful. Here's another favorite, of course. This is an ordinance map of the same town, Ham Street, in England. On the right, it is antique, then a later edition, then still later. And then there is Ham Street, as you see it today. And I have brought it down into San Francisco, California, OK? Uh, and the cancellation will show you where it is. OK, this is, I received the bulletin on this. This is from the Oxford story. It has to do with a museum in the city of Oxford. And as soon as I saw those bicyclists, I knew what I would do. And the stamp issue I chose is from the life of Queen Victoria. And you can't get any more Victorian than that. There she is. Elderly, then younger, then as a young queen, and then as a maiden. This is Roman Britain. So I, I knew these. I saw them in the bulletin. And so my lettering is what is called in historic lettering Bustophedron. Bustof writing as the ox plows in the field. It goes from left to right, and then the next line is from right to left, and then the next from uh, reversed, and then again reversed on the bottom. So I did that. And I thought this was a good unity. OK, this is the Brit Britain calls these countries. The countries of Scotland. Wales, Ireland, and England. I thought the stamps would be large, so I left all that space up there. And the next one is the mate to it, which is this. And again, I used the Welsh dragon down there. So I thought I was not bad, but they kind of didn't file, follow through. OK, this is a souvenir sheet. And it was called Smiles. <clears throat> and they repeated this more than once. So you will recognize several. There's the Mona Lisa in the middle down there, the teddy bear on top, 
There's Punch and Judy in the middle. Next to him is the Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland. And there's Laurel and Hardy down in the lower right, OK? And in the cancellation, somebody is getting a pie smashed in their, <laughs> in their face, OK? <clears throat> this is in honor of the St. John Ambulance Corps. It's one of my favorites. As soon as I saw this, I knew what I would try to do. And this is 1987. OK, this is another category of which I don't have many. But this is manuscripts on stamps. And these are famous for Yugoslavia, which is before it's split into how many countries now. And I had a booklet from the British Museum which I treasure, Slavonic manuscripts in the British Museum. And so I was able to devise this alphabet. There is now currently in the world of calligraphy a woman who is teaching workshops in this alphabet style. Uh, and if you look at the information sheet, it will tell you which all of these are, which I forget. There's a Hebrew one at the right. OK, this is now 9 by 12. These are huge. Some of them I made out of Archer's paper. And some of them I bought just in the stationery store. Because the sheet is large. So there is the guy who is on the bottom, in the middle of the stamp. This was, we missed Atlanta. Where are you? It was Olympics. Here it is. And so there is a runner carrying the torch. And this, I think, is the most charming stamp souvenir sheet that the Postal Service has ever issued. I wish that they had kept this forever, but it was only this one time. Because I, it's irresistible. I, I'm crazy about guinea pigs anyway, so <laughs> you don't often see them on stamps. OK, you will recognize who that is. Again, this is the souvenir sheet. I also did the small envelope. And this is Daffy Duck. You can see he's bigger there. This is subsequently. And there was also Porky Pig came out. But my approach was terrible. I either tore it up or threw it out or something. OK, the Disney Corporation issued thousands of stamps. In the beginning, they began with Bambi and Snow White and Pinocchio and all those movies. And then they began doing other things. And they did them for Mongolia. They did them from Bhutan. They did them for people who have no idea who Disney was, nor never ever saw a movie. <laughs> but they did them. But this one is dear to my heart, because the stamp, the souvenir sheet on the right, is Goofy stepping out of the space capsule and slipping on a banana peel. <laughs> and if that isn't me, then nothing is, OK? I sympathize. And that's from the Virgin Islands somewhere. <laughs> OK, this is from San Francisco. It was triangular, which is unusual for the US. I don't know if it was our first triangular stamp. I forget. 
but down opposite this building underground is Brooks Hall, which some of you will remember was an exhibition hall, no longer. And this expo was held down there. And so you could bring your stamp to the counter and they would cancel it where you wished. And they had these four different cancellations. So that was one design I did. I also did it this way. And I did it also on small envelopes. And I, re I loved this issue. I thought it was beautiful. They should have kept it forever. This is not so long ago, insects and spiders. I don't know how many recall it. It was quite popular. OK, this is from Rome. And I had this information from Lynn's Stamp News. So I bought a 9 by 12 envelope and sent it off. And to my astonishment, everything fit to the millimeter on my, and I never would have expected that. I was very lucky and very pleased. But if you will see after the N on my name, somebody local wrote the figure five, which is my local postman, okay? <laughs> okay, this is personally very dear to the heart of my son Stephen and myself. This is the miraculous infant of Prague. When he was a child, some of you will remember that dashboard figurines were very popular. I haven't seen one in years. But there was Jesus, there was the Virgin Mary, there was St. Michael, against the, the, the enemy, the devil, of course. And we had several figures of the miraculous image of Prague. So I knew I had to do this. I made it as formal as I could. And as a videographer, Stephen once, he had a gig photographing in Prague. I said, go see the image. So he went. <laughs> and he came back to me <clears throat> with miniatures, with a polo shirt, with the emblem, with a book showing the costume that the image wears every religious holiday, and more. I was overwhelmed. But it was very dear to our hearts. And I know that every time he saw one, he would think of me. And the reverse was also true. OK, here we go. This is something like 5 by 8 inches or more. And this is a first day cover between Sweden on the left, America on the top right, and Finland on the bottom. And the three cancellations are here. And on the left, you will recognize Jenny Lind in the middle and Charles Lindbergh. I don't know why he's there, but there is a connection. OK, this is the Pitcairn Islands, where you know that is. I think it's under the jurisdiction of Chile. And the writing below in my text is an alphabet that I copied from Mark Van Stone. Some of you will remember that name. He had sent me something like this from Texas or wherever he was. He's gone into the Mayan alphabet subsequently. But his writing looked like this, and so does mine. And this is Sweden. And the circus, and because that acrobat in the middle is upside down, so is my A. And there's a trapezist. She's above the horse, I see, on the right. And there's a seal balancing balls in the cancellation. 
Okay, this is, if you will look on the block on the right, you will see a banana. And I believe this is the first of the stamps that were produced as shapes instead of square as a postage stamp. And so I wanted this desperately. And there it is. And if I had to do this now, instead of a pineapple down there, why did I not have a banana? I have no idea. It may have been a time thing. Get it in the mail while you still have time. So I want to thank you all for being here. I am very grateful because this is the last one. And now in the neighboring Ireland, Ireland, they are harvesting Fiji water for you. And we leave, as you hear the ukuleles strumming in the distance and the palms, palms swaying. And Dorothy Lemour is jump, jumping into a volcano. And Clark Gable is rushing to save her. And the happy natives are dancing on the shore. This is the end. <laughs> Thank you.